Hi guys, today I'm going to go over how to draw the uh, lizard from Spider-Man. And I... I'm going to cover a couple of things here. Um, I'm going to actually mainly do the upper torso more so than anything. Right now I'm drawing with a pen, just a regular ballpoint pen. Um... Right now I'm actually not sure what position I want him in, so I'm just going to kind of sketch out some instruction lines. Not totally sure. I'm going to do him mostly out of my head, really, because he's essentially um, an overgrown, uh, you know, anthropomorphic lizard, but with kind of a lab coat thing going on. He always has that, like, in every incarnation. I'm just going to do maybe his upper torso, like I said. Okay, sure. Right now, I want this to be the head. I want this to be the shoulders, shoulder line. Um, let's see, coat over here. Maybe like it's hunched over a little bit. Uh, it's always The coat's always a little ripped. Um, these are just, like I said, placement, placement, placement lines, so I don't have to go back. All right. I have a very vague, kind of just a simple placement. Now I'm going to draw into this, and when I do that, I'm going to time-lapse it, and then I'm going to talk maybe in between the time-lapses. Alrighty, uh, here I go. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop for a second. Um, right now I'm trying to work out... Well, I'm going to stop the time lapse and talk and draw normally I, um, at normal pace. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to figure out what shape, what shape of his face is going to be. I'm going to put him with the uh, more of the comic book look where he had the snout kind of thing, like a regular lizard. Uh, I know in this, the Amazing Spider-Man movie he had more of a humanoid face. He looked more like Killer Croc, I thought, in the movie. But I'll do another video of that later if it's requested. Um, but for now, I want to stick with this classic look from the comics. I really liked it a lot more, personally. I know it's not... It's different because I guess they, they, they probably made the other one more human so you can, you know... Uh, I'm assuming you can empathize more with him or maybe to show the actor's face a little bit through the, uh, through the CG. Um, but I actually always like the the snout kind of look to him, like a more of animalistic. Uh, so right now I'm just trying to figure that out, how the snout kind of comes out, comes forward uh, in space there. You have to make it look like it's coming forward in space. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just trying to slowly work my way around that. You kind of have to work your mind around it first, and then you'll draw it in. I have to, like, think first. Like, okay, this is coming out. Think of the front snout as a box, almost, going back into space. That's kind of the way I think about it. His head is like a long box that I see going backwards into space. Um, and then I go from there, I actually try to think of where his teeth would be, things like that. You don't particularly need anatomy, I guess. I mean, I guess you do need anatomy and every time every time you draw something organic, but I don't feel like I'm, I'm super uh, concentrating on it. Trying to fix his bumps on his head to make him symmetrical. All right, I'm going to time lapse again, and uh, I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay. Uh, uh, right now I'm uh, going into basically just straight drapery. Um, you know, the clothing he's wearing, it should be tight around him. It's kind of drawn this overcoat, pretty much making up any overcoat I've drawn before with the folds. You know, I remember the, uh, I'm actually not entirely happy, to be honest, with this particular coat, but it is, uh, it's passable, but it's not, not my favorite coat. Not my favorite girl, but what I'm thinking about is uh, the uh, the kind of flexion points where things bend. If his arm uh, is bending, 
it's going to flex. The cloth is going to bend on just the side it's bending on. And it's going to straighten out a little bit more on the opposite side. And that's kind of all over the body. Same thing with his armpit. It's going to, uh, you know, drapery is going to fold in on itself over his armpit area. It'll straighten out more on the edge here. Uh, this isn't, uh, I don't think this is the greatest representation of uh, correct fabric, to be honest. But I, I'm like, like I said, it is passable. And that is what I'm going for in this uh, sketch form. I mean, if this is a longer, more formal drawing, I would probably go back and fix it because it would bother me. And it's one of those changes that, honestly, um, it's one of those things that it'll bother the artist more than anybody else. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, I'm going to do time-lapse again. Alright, um, I'm going to kind of describe what I do with the hand a little bit here. Um, it's kind of going forward in space here. It's like there's a little bit of foreshortening on the way back because he's reaching toward the camera. Uh, that's usually a difficult spot for a lot of people, you know, including even my, my, myself still. It's uh, the hand in itself, you have to, it's kind of like you have to work that out, you know. Never think of the hands of the feet as like an afterthought. It's always, it's like a creature on itself. It's almost like you zoom right in. It's, an, it's a different photo. You're just like, okay, a different photo, different picture, different drawing. You are thinking very hard about where those fingers are being splayed, things like that. Um, keep in mind what's closest to you in space if someone's reaching out for you. Uh, put it this finger. And let me see. I uh, put a little bit of indications of scales over here. It kind of looks like zits to me right now, so I'm trying to trying to maybe make it trying to put it more over the whole thing. Trying to indicate a little bit here and there. And those are not meant to be. There you go. Those are meant to be kind of random. Random placement of these kind of. Looks like he has scales. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the finishing, kind of like the face here. I mean, finish for the sketch at least. Uh, I'm going to darken in where I want the viewer's eye to go, which would be right to the face. Most of the eyes. I darken in maybe the side of the face over here to show that it's coming in front of his shoulder, his back shoulder there. Um, Trying to darken it too much because then it changes the value of the whole thing basically, and you have to go back and darken everything else. Um, Teeth here. Got some sharp teeth. Alright, I'm generally happy with a sketch and I think it's good for learning. Um, for the, I mean, for the purposes of this video, I think it's fine. Um, just you can go back to any single sketch. Any sketch you do, anybody, you know, you can, you know, what I could do, I could go right back to this and I could pick it up right off again and start putting little details, clean up things here and there. This is pen. The way I, the, really the only way you can clean up uh, a pen line is to make another line, right, the, the line you want to show darker. And that's dangerous because then what if you make that line darker and then you don't want that line anymore and you can't take it out. Um, but remember that. So the the way the you when you can't erase, just make what you want to be shown a lot darker. At least in pen. Don't do that in pencil. <laughs> at least at the start, don't do that in pencil. You can do that later on. Uh, all right then. Uh, remember to please uh, 
subscribe to my channel, and I really appreciate you watching. Um, I'd really like to do a lot of these. I'm actually going to go to school in a few uh, weeks, so I want to do as many of these as I can. All right, thank you.